welcome. Welcome. God bless you tonight. Welcome to this special edition of Bible study tonight, where we will be uh, tapping into an incredible mystery of the blood of Christ. I want to welcome the FMI family, Apostle Francis Miles International. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, along with Sons of God Embassy. We honor you tonight and thank you so much for joining us tonight for this incredible teaching on tonight that I believe is about to bless you tremendously. And I believe that many uh, that would tune in tonight will be set free by the power of the blood. I want to honor and celebrate my spiritual father, Apostle Francis Mao, my spiritual mother, uh, Pastor, Ma, uh, Com Pastor Camilla. We honor you tonight. We greet you in Jesus' mighty name. And again, we greet you, FMI family. Uh, get a hold of someone. Let them know tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Apostle Lee Robinson from the Sons of God Embassy. I pass alongside my incredible wife, Pastor April. We pass an incredible church here in Jacksonville, Florida. And we do honor you tonight. Tonight, I'm going to be doing an incredible teaching that God gave me a mystery on breaking soul ties through the blood of Christ. That's right. Breaking soul ties through the blood of Christ. So if you know anyone that is suffering from soul ties, that's been trying to break this thing, God has sent a word for you tonight. We want you to be prepared because the blood of Christ is ready to set you free. In Jesus' mighty name. So tap somebody, tap a neighbor, get a hold of someone, and let them know that the Lord Jesus Christ has sent a word specifically for them on how to destroy and break soul ties once and all for your life. I am uh, I have been in the midst of an incredible revelation on the blood of Christ. And in the midst of this, another book was birthed in me that is coming out at the end of April of this year. Bless the Lamb of God. But in that, I'm going to be teaching from this chapter tonight on breaking soul ties. And in my fellowship with the blood and with the Holy Spirit, I was given this mystery. And so the Lord gave me this insight on how to break soul ties once and for all. So if you are out there suffering from soul ties and you are in the midst of one and been trying to break it, tonight is your night. So we're going to begin with the word of God found in Leviticus 17, verse number 11. Leviticus 17, verse 11. It says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for your soul. I was up fellowshipping one night, one morning with the blood and with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit began to give me this mystery on breaking soul ties. And he began to instruct me on insight on how to do this and said these words to me. Said that many are still suffering from soul ties because there's one major key that we have not dealt with. And he began to show me a mystery. And I'm going to share this mystery with you tonight. And I pray by, by your faith that you will be set free in Jesus' mighty name. The first thing that we need to see that Leviticus 17 and 11 gives us an insight on the power of the blood. And that the blood and the altar has a relationship. And that once the blood and the altar comes together with your faith, it can destroy anything that is troubling your soul including soul ties. Now, before I begin, I want to say this. Not all soul ties are bad. Not all soul ties are bad. But there are illegal soul ties that we have connected ourselves to that is troubling us, that is causing torment, that is causing many of us to miss our destiny, that is causing many of us to walk alternative destinies and moving us from purpose and, and moving us farther from our assignment and causing us to lose the great gift and the great assignment that God has given us. And so Leviticus 17 and 11 says that the blood, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Now we have the blood of Christ. There is no power greater than the blood of Christ. There is no power greater than the blood of Christ. And so what is a soul tie? What is an illegal soul tie? Like I said, not all soul ties are bad, but there are illegal soul ties that are tormenting us. What is an illegal soul tie? Soul tie, soul ties are when you have spiritually, emotionally, 
physically connected your soul to an individual, place, or person without the blessing of the Father and the protection from the blood of Christ. I'm going to read that again. Soul ties. Soul ties is when you have spiritually, physically, emotionally connected your soul to an individual place or thing without the blessing of the Father and the protection from the blood of Christ. That is an illegal soul tie. Now, as I said earlier, all soul ties are not bad. Now, we can see in 1 Samuel chapter number 18, David and Jonathan had a soul tie. That soul tie was legal because David was benefit or blessed and was ordained by God to enter into this relationship with Jonathan. And 1 Samuel 18, verse 1, it said, And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. So legal soul ties bring divine protection. Bring divine enhancement of your assignment. And if you read further, it was Jonathan that protected David when his father was trying to kill him. So legal soul ties bring divine protection. It brings enhancement to your assignment. It agrees with your assignment. And it blesses your assignment. So legal soul ties does those. But let's take a look at symptoms of soul ties. Symptoms of soul ties. These are symptoms of soul ties. Unexplainable connections to individuals even without being in a current relationship with them. Illegal soul ties is birth when you enter into a relationship, when you become intimate with an individual prior to marriage. When you have when you have entered into a relationship and you have not been married or ordained to be married to that individual and y'all are not married and y'all entered into an intimate relationship, the quickest way to, to birth an illegal soul tie is through intimacy or sex before marriage. And many people have failed prey to this and have had multiple partners prior to finding the one that God has ordained them to be married to. The quickest way to enter into illegal soul tie is through sex before marriage. So some of the symptoms are unexplained connection to individuals even without being in a current relationship with them. There's an unexplained connection to them. That's because that soul tie that you enter into begins to manipulate your emotions, your feelings, and even your thought patterns. There's an unexplained connection there. Another one, another symptom is having dreams about them that have unusual influence in your emotions. So you have dreams about the individual. And it, and it was the dream was so real, so impactful that it began to impact your emotions. These are symptoms of illegal soul ties. You are dreaming about them. And in dreaming about them, many, many cases, it feels as if it was real. It feels as if it was tangible. And now you guys are not in no longer in a relationship, but yet you're still dreaming about them. And it's affecting your emotions. It's affecting your feelings. And it changes and alters your day now because you had a dream about it. Another one. They have an influence over your decisions. You're still thinking about them. They have made that because of the illegal soul time, now it's affecting your decision making. You will now make a decision. Now, again, you are no longer in a relationship with them. 
You are no longer connected with them. But because that soul tie has not been broken, now that soul tie is influencing your decision making. Maybe God called you to move from that state, move from that city. But because that person still is impacting your soul, still impacting your emotion, still impacting your thoughts, you won't move even though God has directed you to move. And even though the opportunity has presented itself, you can't move because it is now that soul tie is influencing your decision making. Another one. They are stopping you. This illegal soul tie is stopping you from fully committing your heart to your current relationship because your emotions is still governed by the previous partner. I'm going to say that again. They are stopping you from fully committing your heart to your current relationship. Because your emotions are still being governed by your previous partner. That, my friends, is a soul tie. And it's stopping you from fully giving your heart, fully giving your emotion, fully giving your, 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 your affection to the, to, the, to the current relationship. You are still being impacted by that individual because that soul tie never was broken. Next symptom. They occupy your thoughts constantly and often manipulate your happiness. See, they, they now manipulate your happiness. That soul tie from that individual manipulate your happiness, causes you to go from being happy to now being sad, discouraged, because you saw something or heard something about the individual and it's affecting you. And and now where you was you was happy previous before hearing that information, now you are impacted by it. And now your happiness that you had prior to that information is now manipulating your happiness. Your happiness, even your pursuit of happiness, because you feel there's still time to be reconciled. Even though, this is the most powerful point, even though the other party has already committed and in another relationship, you are still looking for them to return. You are still looking for them to fulfill your joy, your happiness. You hear their voice and they are not present. Soul ties are dangerous because they can linger for months and even years if one does not allow the blood of Christ to cleanse your soul as Leviticus 17 and 11 has taught. They are so dangerous that soul ties are even responsible for stopping individuals from pursuing their destiny because they are waiting for the individual to fulfill something that they are never have never been assigned or ordained to do. Illegal soul ties are responsible for many in the body of Christ that they pursuit has been robbed and derailed because they have never, never pursued the blood of Christ to destroy or remove these soul ties. And so now they are being manipulated by this demonic spirit soul tie that you got connected to because you entered into a relationship that was not blessed by the father or protected by the blood of Christ. The danger of soul ties is this, is that soul ties is the power of the demonic world to cause you to enter into a relationship that was not legal by heaven or by God the Father. And as I began to do this, I began, I began to hear and see an incredible revelation that God gave me that I want to share with you tonight as we uh, embark on this destroying and removing breaking soul ties away from you where you can be free in Jesus like today. name. For the Bible says whom the sun set free is free indeed. Let's go to John chapter 4. John chapter 4, we're going to begin reading it at verse number 2. It says, though Jesus himself baptized not 
but his disciples. He left Judea and departed again unto Galilee. He must need go through Samaria. Then cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is called Scar, near the parcel of the ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Now Jacob well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Then, then, then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman, then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a, a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked him, and he would have given them living water. The woman said to him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. For whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than the father Jacob, which gave us this well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said to her, Whosoever drink up of this water, shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come here and draw again. And Jesus said to him, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. But thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast now is not thy husband. And this thou truly. And this is where the Holy Spirit began to give me the mystery of breaking soul ties. Let's take a closer look to this revelation that the blood of Christ is about to unfold for us tonight. Let's look at verse number 16. Jesus said to her, he said, go call your husband and come back. Verse 17, she said, I have no husband, she replied. And that's when the Lord began to show me this. He said, this woman is suffering from soul ties. Because soul tie is when you are married to an individual, you have married your soul to an individual without the blessing of the father and the protection of the blood. See, she was with a man, intimate, and she had been with five. And the one that was at the house was not her husband. She, by definition, is suffering from illegal soul ties. And that's when the Lord began to unlock this mystery to me and said, now pay attention because he says, what you guys have been doing is that you've been fighting soul ties but there's a key in this passage that's going to unlock the whole mystery and set you free tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 13 says this, Everyone who drinks this water will thirst again. Now, let's look closer at the text. Jesus is sitting on the well, Jacob's well. So, in essence, it's a well sitting on a well. But the well of Jacob, look what Jesus said about Jacob's well. He said, whoever drinks from this well will thirst again. And he said to the woman, whoever drinks from me will not only not thirst again, but will, will produce a well inside of them, will open up a well inside of them and unleash their own. And that's when the Lord spoke to me and said, what you guys are doing and failing to do and breaking soul ties is that you are not destroying the thirst. 
you are not destroying the thirst. Because look what the scripture says. Now, this is very powerful. Jesus answered and said to her, who's ever drink of this water, she'll thirst again. In other words, you, you, Jacob well represents the man or the woman that you have connected to illegally without the father's blessing and without the blood protection. Jacob well represents that individual, that place that you have tied your soul to without the blessing of the father and without the protection of the blood. Jacob well represents that man or that woman that you have become intimate with. That you have given yourself to, glory to God, but you are not married, but you have become intimate. You have shared your soul. You have shared your emotions. You have shared your will, and you have shared your mind, but y'all are not blessed by the Father, nor protected by the blood of Christ. Jacob well represents that. And what happens is the thirst from that thing, the thirst from that person, the thirst from that place causes you to keep coming back again and again. And no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, you keep going back because you never broke the thirst. But tonight, by the power of the blood of Christ and by the water that flows from Christ Jesus, that thirst will be broken tonight in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Did you see that? The well of Jacob represents the man or the woman. But there's another well sitting on top of that well. And that's Jesus Christ. And look what Jesus said to her. This is very powerful. And this is why we must understand the power of breaking soul ties. Jesus said to her, he said to her, but the water I give you, my God, that's powerful. He said, but the water that I give you, you should never thirst, but the water I should give him shall, shall be in him a well of water springing up to everlasting. See, soul ties. It's so powerful that the well or the individual or the place convinces you that that's the only place that you can quench your thirst. So it, what it does, soul ties manipulates you and causes you to come back again and again and again, but never being fulfilled. And so that's the danger of soul ties. Because that's how... That's how soul ties is so strong because it gets your thirst and it begins to manipulate your thirst and begin to, to, to have you thinking that the well is helping you when the well itself or the individual itself is draining you, slowly draining you. If you're going to see in this text how powerful soul ties, illegal soul ties is. And once they are broken, the individual or the place or the thing that you tied your soul to illegally loses its power and its manipulation over your life. Jesus said, everyone who drinks this water will thirst again. And, and, and see, we must understand that every soul tie comes with a thirst that is constantly causing us to make a return visit to the individual. And it has us deceived that it's giving us emotions. It's replacing our emotions. It's, it's, it's giving us feelings. It's giving us, but it's not. It's robbing us and deceiving us and hiding a very valuable gift inside of you. Let's take a closer look. Because see, one of the things that the, the well of Jacob or that man or that woman does is that it presents to you that it is giving you comfort, emotional deposits, love. In many cases, it appears that way. But if you look closely, you are the only one in that relationship pouring out while the other individual is not pouring back into you. They are cleverly manipulating your emotions they are cleverly manipulating your feelings and your affection. But Jesus said in verse 14, something very powerful. He said, whoever drink of this water, I give them will never thirst. 
never thirst again. Now, this is very powerful. I want you to hear tonight. He said, the water I give you will never, you will never thirst. I will give them become a spring of water welled up in you. See, now you can see the difference between the two wells. See, one well does not unlock the well or the gift in you. It only draws from you. But the water, the well that flows from Jesus, not only quench your thirst, but unlock the gift, the power, the assignment that's in you so that you can turn around and now quench other thirst or other bless other people around you. Glory to God. That's the power that's inside of the well or the water that flows from Jesus Christ. See, Jesus well represents the unlocking of you, while Jacob's well or the individual that you are tied to now, that you've been trying to break free from, is robbing you. Verse 15 is the most important verse in this passage. And this is how you get free tonight. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming back here to draw. Are you thirsty enough tonight? Are you ready to get set free tonight? Are you ready to depart from the well or the individual that's robbing you? That's manipulating your feelings, your emotions, your affection. That's draining you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the most powerful things that we can do is recognize when it's our hour of deliverance. This woman recognized this is my moment. Jesus has now come to set me free. He said to her, you have had five and the one whom is not yours. But she recognized the moment of breakthrough, the moment of deliverance. You need to recognize tonight is your night. You need to recognize tonight is that moment that the Lord has orchestrated. You want to hear something powerful. At the beginning of the passage, it says he must need to go through Samaria. I am prophesying to somebody tonight. I'm speaking directly to you tonight that it was a need for you to hear this word tonight. It was a need for me to come to FMI tonight. It was a need for God to come and send a representative tonight so that the, that illegal soul tie that's been destroying you, that's been manipulating, that's been controlling you, that's been robbing you, that's been draining you can be broken once and for all in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, one of the most powerful things that demonic inside of a legal soul time, it, it has the power to hide what's inside you. I'm going to say that again. The most powerful thing that's demonically driven by illegal soul time is that it has the ability to hide what's inside of you because you're too busy visually trying to please, trying to honor, trying to value a will or an individual that's actually devaluing you by not unlocking what's on inside of you. So the first thing we need to do is recognize like this woman, we must recognize the hour of our deliverance. The second thing I want to show you about the deception that's connected to soul time, notice that Jesus stated that once you drink the living water yourself, will become a well yourself. See, soul ties want you dependent on the individual. Illegal, side, illegal soul ties want you dependent on the individual, the place, or the person. It, it, it would deceive you. It would deceive you while having you believing that the individual is best for you. And it, it brings you dependent 
solely dependent on that individual. That's why this woman said, give me the drinks where I won't come back to this well again. See, that thirst must be broken. The reason you keep going back is because of the thirst. The thirst was never broken. You fasted, you prayed, you had hands laid on you. But you never broke the thirst. And the thirst is what makes you run back to that individual. The thirst is what makes you run back to that place. The thirst is what connects you to it. And see, soul ties, once you depend on the individual, value while not allowing you to see your own value. That's powerful. See, illegal soul ties only let you see the value of the individual and you see your value through them. Glory to God. And you can't see your own value because you're constantly feeding the individual even though you're drinking from them spiritually, you are constantly feeding their value. It removes you from being independent. You see, once you break soul tie, it removes you from being dependent on false words, false love, false affection, and never manifesting promises that the individual all have been saying to you. See, the water that Jesus gives you unlocks you, while the well, the, the well from the soul tie keeps you locked into the individual and uncertain of your own abilities and gifts. The next thing that's so powerful and, and so wicked by this demonic thing is that, and, and most dangerous about it, is that soul ties is that spirit that would not let you see your own assignment. You, you, you tie everything in you around that individual. And soul ties won't allow you to see your own assignment. This woman, very powerful, watch this. In verse 28, the woman, watch this, this is after her encounter with Jesus. Because see, what, what, what's wicked about soul time is that it allows you to see the individual's assignment, the individual's purpose, the individual importance, the individual's value, but it won't allow you to see your own. And you see your own self through them. Not knowing you are just as valuable, just as important, just as knowing it, just as powerful, just as, as chosen. But you can't see that because the soul tie from the individual is manipulating your visual, your affection. What well, verse 28? Verse 28 says, the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the man, come see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ. And then they went out of the city and came unto him. This is very powerful. I want you to see this. So tired, had this woman so down, so manipulated, she could not even see that she was an evangelist. What is so tired hiding in you? What have not the kingdom of God have permission to use you, which the kingdom of God sits you in the earth to do? This woman was a powerful evangelist. This woman who was who was ostracized and probably talked about, probably rumored about, probably, probably uh, uh, people avoided her. And this is why she was at the well by herself. This same woman set that city on fire. Why? Because once soul tie is broken, your assignment comes alive and the power that's connected to that assignment, the anointed that's connected to that assignment now empowers you and sets you free. And now you can fully walk in what God called you. This woman was an evangelist. What do the kingdom of God have inside of you? What seed? What assignment? What purpose, what anointing, what city, what nation, what country, what continent do the kingdom of God has in you that soul tie is manipulating and causing you not to see? 
the power, once the soul tie was broken, this woman arose, she dropped a part, which, which was a prophetic announcement that the weight, the stain, glory to God, she was, she was carrying, the part represents the stain that caused her, the trauma, the pain, the mistake, the rape, the molestation, glory to God, the trauma that caused you to connect to someone that is not legally yours. That's what that part represented. And when she dropped that part, and tonight, by the power of the blood, and by the water that flows from, that living water that flows out of Jesus Christ, you are about to drop the thing that you've been carrying. She's been carrying that water pot. She's been carrying that trauma. She's been carrying that pain. She's been carrying that embarrassment. She's been carrying that memory. She's been carrying that rape. She's been carrying that molestation. She's been carrying that trauma. She's been carrying, glory to God, for years. But that day, glory to God, she dropped the weight. She dropped the thing that caused her to connect to the soul what is the thing that was birthed in you that caused you to pursue false love to connect you to an illegal soul tie? We must recognize our day of deliverance. We must recognize that this is the hour. This is the moment, just like that woman. Just like, you see, she was free because she asked for something. And she asked for that living water that will quench that thirst. That thirst that caused her to carry that weight for all those years. Tonight, family, I am inviting you tonight. I am inviting you in Jesus' mighty name to ask for that living water tonight. And it's going to flow. It's going to quench that thirst. It's going to cause you to drop that memory. Drop that trauma, drop that pain that you've been carrying so long that caused you to connect to that illegal soul tie. When that woman got set free, glory to God, when she got set free, she went to the same city, the same men, and started a powerful move of God. What's hidden in you that soul ties has been deceiving, manipulating, hiding, glory to God, causing you to think that you're not valuable, causing you to depend on an individual that is not pouring back into you. See, you have to understand if that well, if that individual is not unlocking you, if that individual is not promoting you, if that individual is not helping you find your assignment, fulfill your assignment, you are probably connected to an illegal soldier. But there's help tonight. There's help in the name of Jesus Christ. There's help through the name of the Lord. And the blood of Christ it's here to set you free. See, the other thing that's powerful about this that I want you to see is that once soul tie is broken, I need you to hear this part because this is very powerful. Once soul tie is broken, embarrassment loses its strength. She was not ashamed. A, a she was not ashamed to run through the city. She was not ashamed to tell the men and many of the men that probably had that relationship with, she's now ministering to those men. She's gathering the whole city. Once soul tie is broken, embarrassment, shame loses its strength. And you come alive because now that living water, glory to God, is now your energy. Now it's promoting your value to yourself. And now this woman is set free. Why? Because she broke illegal soul ties. There are three spirits that strengthen soul ties and strengthen the thirst. The first one is appetite. This is how you know that the soul tie is manipulating you. Because inside of the thirst is the appetite. 
appetite. This is the spirit that birthed a longing and yearning to constantly desire to be around the individual. It plants the desire that if I'm not around them, my life is incomplete and empty. It derives a strong desire to not want, want not to want to leave them. That's inside of the thirst. Two, taste. This is the spirit of the three that produces the image of the individual. You see, you know how when you, you taste something, when you have a taste for something, glory to God, you see, before you even taste it, it, you have a taste for something, you can have an image of it before you even physically taste it. Inside of thirst is taste. This what gives you the image of the individual. And what it does, it manipulates images of the individual and the individual is nowhere around you. But the taste for them, the taste, the desire, the taste to be around them produces an image. And that image will be birthed around us and it will be with us until it is fulfilled. This is the spirit of the three that produces the image of the individual, even though you are not present with them. And all of us have been guilty of this statement, man, that steak is going to going to be so good I can taste it. What did you do? You gave yourself an image. That's what soul tie does. It gives you an image of an individual that's illegally not yours, and it will even give you an image of a wedding, of a ceremony, places that you plan to be with the individual that must be destroyed it is in the thirst finally hunger hunger this is the spirit that says I don't I don't have enough I don't have enough and make you pursue while you are never full or content you got to always be around me you're never full. You're never, you get to always be around them. This spirit alone is responsible for continuing return, even if you manage to get rid of the other two. Hunger alone will drive you back because it never full, never satisfied with the portion given. So it wants more and more and won't stop until it has successfully reached this target, no matter the cost or route it takes to get there. This is what, see, soul type manipulates these. And, and what it does is have us pursuing the individual, even though the individual is not us. You find yourself driving past their home. You find yourself strolling, looking. Uh, Y'all not in a relationship. Find yourself strolling through, through all the social media stuff. You have to see what they are doing. You cannot get enough of them. And you are trying to find a way to reconnect. That's hunger. When these three are gripped by soul tie, an individual can be easily manipulated out of their destiny. And like that woman tonight, it's now time to drink from the right well. These three are not dangerous when they are properly directed, but when they are manipulated by soul tie, it can destroy an individual's life and destiny. But when you drink of the living water from Jesus, these three become a terror of the kingdom of darkness. So today, I invite you to drink from the well. That well that set this woman free, that broke that soul tie, is available for you tonight. That will is still flowing from Jesus Christ. Tonight, I want to invite you to drink from that well. Tonight, let's break the thirst. The reason that soul tie keep popping up is because you never broke the thirst. 
you tried to stay away. You've done this, you've done that. But you never broke the curse. Tonight, it's time to break the curse. I want to invite you tonight to pray this prayer with me and be set free. That soul ties will no longer, illegal soul ties will no longer be manipulated. Remember, your soul consists of your mind, your will, your emotion. When we deal with soul ties, that's what we're dealing with. Your mind, your will, your emotion. Something, a will, that is illegal, is manipulating your soul and causing you to not fulfill your true assignment. Let's get free tonight. Like that woman got free it's time for you to get free. Like that woman dropped that part, that weight, it's time for you to drop yours. I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me tonight. That that soul tie once and for all be broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you're watching me from tonight, Tonight is your night of deliverance. Tonight is your night of breakthrough. In the glorious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to pray this prayer. And as we pray, I want you to release your faith. I want you to see yourself just as the woman. And remember, the disciples was trying to intervene, break up this meeting. But the scripture says, Jesus must need to go to Samaria. I'm saying tonight, he must need to speak to you tonight. No matter where you're viewing me from tonight, tonight is that night that that soul tie loses its strength. I want you to pray this prayer with me in Jesus' glorious name. Say, Father, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to set the captive free. Tonight, Father, I activate Leviticus 17 and 11. I thrust my soul upon the altar. Blood of Christ, Holy Spirit, Jesus, I repent for connecting to this illegal soul time. As I repent, I now thrust my soul, rededicate my soul back to the original giver of it, the Father. Jesus and John, the fourth chapter, the woman at the well, the Samaritan, asked for the living water. Jesus, tonight, by faith, I request that same living water to quench my thirst that will break the power and manipulation of this illegal soul tie. Give me to drink your living water. Now, blood of Christ, wash and cleanse my soul from this illegal 
soldier. Remove all residue, evidence, spots, and blemishes that these illegal soul ties bought to my soul. Cleanse it and make it as white as snow that I may present it as an offering to my father. That he, the original soul giver, may become one with mine. Blood of Christ, heal me from emotional scars, manipulation, imaginations, images, terror, false promises, false affection, and false love. Heal me that I may be ready for my real soulmate. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you if you prayed that prayer. Glory to God. We want you to invite you to write us a testimony. Let us know what happened. Send a message to Apostle Francis Miles Hill at uh, FMI. In the name of Jesus Christ, let them know what this teaching done and how the blood of Christ and the water, living water, quench your thirst. I want to take a few minutes. If you have any questions for me tonight, feel free to write your questions, write in your questions, and I will answer them best of my ability. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, this teaching is in my upcoming new book. The Blood Unleashed will be coming out at the end of, of April. Praise God. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. If there are any questions on soul tie, legal soul tie, please write it in. I will answer them in Jesus' mighty name. I pray the Lord bless you tonight. In Jesus' glorious name, we honor you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, praise God. Thank you for joining us tonight. FMI, uh, in Jesus' mighty name, sons of God, we honor you wherever you are. Praise God. Yes, praise God. Freedom is here. Amen. Receive in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Okay, media team, we can put up, uh, how do you know when the soul tie is broken completely? Number one, there, there will be uh, no more dreams of the individual. Uh, the individual manipulation uh, no longer will have effect on you. Um, you can uh, be around the individual and have peace. You're not tormenting your soul. You're not uncomfortable. You're not feeling any type of way. Uh, there's a freedom. There's a freedom that flows through you. That's how you know that the soul tie has been broken. Because the blood of Christ, when the blood of Christ sets us free, the first thing that we have, number one, is peace. That's the first thing I felt when the blood of Christ came into that place in 2020. The second thing I felt was an, an unmeasurable freedom. So there's a freedom. Um, the person no longer um, affects your emotions and no longer affects your decision making. And there's, there's an absolute total freedom. That's how you know you've been, um, the soul tie been broken completely in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for that question. Amen. Soul tie has left, so does it still affect us? No. Once the soul tie has left, it does not long, longer affect you. You now walk just like that woman walked in her assignment. You begin to walk in your assignment. You begin to see your value. You begin to embrace your value. And you begin to move forward in your assignment. Amen. Good question. Amen. Is there another question out there? Praise God. Do you have any other teaching to break illegal soul ties with witches? Yes. Uh, there's another part of this I did not get to tonight. 
but yes, um, soul ties are broken by the blood of Christ. The, uh, Leviticus 17 and 11, the way the Lord showed me is that Leviticus 17 and 11, once you find a soul tie connected to you, you have to thrust your soul prophetically by faith, illegal, uh, thrust your soul upon the altar, which is the cross. The cross is the highest altar known to man. So by faith, you thrust your soul upon that and you begin to apply the blood like I did tonight through that prayer. Apply the blood to your soul and tell the soul to remove all soul ties from witchcraft, sorcery, and black magic. And that's how you break it, by the blood of Christ. What if the person, a good question. What if the person had passed away? That's a good question. Now, I have a teaching that I taught an individual. I took an individual through this one time where I sat the person down and I had them address the person as if the person was there. You can do it that way or you can write a letter. You can write a letter. Once you write the letter, you know, removing your soul, you know, to go through the prayer like I did tonight, remove yourself. Once you finish doing that prayer, you know, say the person's name out and then burn that letter. But the best way to do it is to get an individual that you trust, okay, and have that person sit in proxy for that individual and say it to that person and pray that prayer that I prayed tonight with the blood of Christ and you can be set free, even from a person that has passed away. Good question. Can you have soul ties when you get married? Yes. You can. That's why I was talking about the first half of this teaching where you can't fully commit when that person, if you find yourself still thinking about that person or find yourself um, making a decision based off of that person or comparing that your, 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 your husband or spouse to that person, then you probably still have a soul tie. So yes, what you need to do is take yourself through that soul cleansing, what you just saw me do tonight. Yes, there are people that are married that still are, are, are so tied to the individual that they was with before. And so the best thing to do is to go through that prayer and cleansing like I did tonight and set yourself free. Good question. Can someone pray to break a soul tie off someone else? Yeah, you can, but it's best that the individual does it. So you can pray that God bring them to the revelation or, or the understanding of it, but eventually it's going to have to come down to that individual. That individual going to have to, at some point, take full responsibility and begin to break the soul ties themselves. You can pray that the blood of Christ, you know, begin to move upon their heart, Holy Spirit begin to move upon their heart, reveal unto them in Jesus' mighty name. Soul ties are very tricky. You can have a ring. You can have a picture. You can have a cloth connected to that individual. All those things can bring you to that individual or connect you to them. So I've taken people through ceremonies where they burnt pictures and they were set free. I've, you know, But this thirst thing is what got me because God said we were breaking them, but we wasn't breaking the thirst because the thirst is what brings them back. So the individual at some point will have to take full responsibility themselves. I am delivered, but in dreams, I still see the ex-husband entering my house with the key. Yes. Now, this is, there's something that this person has over you. Because if they're using the key to get in, there's still a part of the soul that you have not cleansed the individual from. So, what you need to do it this this can be an individual what, what you have to do is go through this prayer and and ask the holy spirit reveal to me what key do that individual have so i can break that soul tie through the blood of the lamb because if they're still in your dream there's still a soul tie there okay 
Okay, this one says, Apostle, I have never had sex with a certain person, but I feel as if I love this person. We have been friends for years, though. Is that a soul tie? Although I never know. No, that's not a soul tie. That's not a soul tie. That's not a soul tie. No. Good question. What about in case of spiritual spouses that keep resurfacing? Spiritual spouses is a, a definitely evidence of a soul tie. So that definitely needs to be cleansed from the individual soul. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Well, God bless y'all tonight. Uh, media, if you would, uh, put up... Uh, the book, this is the book I'll be having. I have it. It'll be available at the end of April in Jesus' mighty name. And it has more teaching of um, um, soul ties in it. Uh, I did not get through the whole thing, but this is just uh, part of the, the, the chapter that, that I taught on tonight. So coming soon, be the end of April, uh, the blood of Christ unleashed. So go to our website, Sons of God Embassy, and um, sign up. Sign up, give us your email, give us your uh, mailing address, uh, notification, and we'll notify you when the book is available, and we'll be happy to ship it out to you. Again, go to sonsofgodembassy.com and get on our mailing list. Get on our email, send us an email, let us know uh, how to get in contact with you, and we'll be happy to let you know when the book is available. And this book also have 15 laws of the blood that you can be able to pray daily that will bring a blessing to you in Jesus' mighty name. My first book, uh, The Blood, The Other Voice in the Course of Heaven, is available right now. That is a good one for cleansing, moving spots and blemishes. As you can see, um, soul tie falls into that category. So the blood, the other voice in the course of heaven is available. You can go to sonsofgodinnocent.com. If you don't already have this book, I, I uh, beseech you to get this book. It will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Uh, but uh, we thank you so much tonight. Um, ways to give um, in Jesus' mighty name, media. If you could put that up, uh, um, please subscribe to our channel. If you have not subscribed to FMI, go ahead and hit that hit that subscribe button down at that bell. And uh, Apostle Francis Miles and Mama Camilla would be greatly honored in Jesus' mighty name. Um, you receive great teachings like this all the time on this channel. So go and hit that subscribe button down there below and hit that bell and be notified as soon as Apostle Francis Mile or one of his great speakers that he bring always bring to you guys. Whenever they come out, you'll get notified just like tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Or if you have not subscribed to our page, Sons of God Embassy, you can go to sonsofgodembassy.com and hit subscribe and and be a part of our teaching as well in Jesus' mighty name. You can give if you desire to give tonight. Um, FMI uh, information, uh, media, if you have that in Jesus' mighty name, you can put that up. There are ways to give uh, right on your screen right now. Uh, glory to God in ways you would like to give in Jesus' mighty name. You can sow directly into Apostle Francis Mount. What an incredible ministry in powerful soil to sow into where my wife and I and our ministry is being blessed beyond measure. This is a tremendous ground to sow your seed into in Jesus' mighty name. Also, if you like to sow into this word tonight, you can simply go to sonsofgodembassy.com. There's ways to give right there on our page if you want to sow directly into this word tonight. My information is on there, sonsofgodembassy.com, where you can so directly into this word tonight. I want to thank you so much. And FMI family, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you, uh, Apostle Francis Miles, Mama Camilla. We honor you tonight in Jesus' mighty name. We bless you. And I decree and declare whom the sun set free is free indeed. God bless you is our decree in Jesus' name. Amen.